So you were in the first class of the National Theatre School, which also yeah. must yeah. have been a little... Well, it was because Paul, he'd come to rehearsals and, and, then, uh, and he'd be in a show and then he'd go away on auditions. And then he'd come back and he'd come back and I'd say, how were the auditions? And he, he'd be going off to Montreal on the weekends and meeting with Michel Saint-Denis and all that sort of stuff. And it was really exciting for that whole year that we were at the Crest. And so I kept asking him about how it was going and he would talk about the syllabus and the teachers he was hiring and, and the auditions. And I'd say, how, how were the auditions? And he'd say, oh, fantastic, he said. I went to Regina and I saw this wonderful girl. She had hair down to her hips and she came <laughs> into the room in bare feet and she'd been raised by nuns and she's never been on stage in her life and she, there's nothing we can teach her. She's innately talented and she's in. And then the <laughs> next weekend he'd come back. I'd say, what was Quebec like? Fantastic. There were four girls, hair down to their <laughs> hips, came in in bare feet. <laughs> They're zoftic, gorgeous, beautiful girls. They've all been raised by nuns. There's nothing we can teach them. And of course, they're all in. And so after a <laughs> several of these audition tours, I said to him at one point when he was talking about the, uh, the teachers that he was hiring, I said, if there had been a school like this when I was looking for a school, this is where I would have gone. I'd been all through Carnegie Tech, which was one of the most highly regarded drama schools in the United States. And I knew still, especially from, I was so lucky, you know, because I spent that year at the Crest able to try out what I knew, and I knew I didn't know enough yet. How did you know that, that you didn't know because enough? Because I got to Nina in the Seagull and I didn't know how to play it. And I didn't know how to approach it. What, what's more, I didn't know how to get in there. I mean, I you didn't, didn't know where to go. couldn't grasp the scope of the part? Or just I think I understood it intellectually. I certainly knew what it was about, and I studied the play, and I did all the things they teach you to do at school. But I couldn't, I couldn't find out where I fit. That's the only way I know how to explain it. I didn't know how to sit in it. I couldn't become a part of it. Now, I'd done other things at the Crest season that year that I could fit into. I st the first thing I played there was Ermengarde in The Matchmaker. Now Ermengarde is a very small part and she cries most of the time. So <laughs> it's a, a fairly simple task. And I slipped right into that like nobody's business and I knew exactly how to make that function. But you were smart enough as an actress to know where your limitation was but I and knew, to know that yeah. you had to find another way to move through that. Yeah. I knew I had come to the limit of my skill. And by skill, I don't just mean technique. I mean emotional technique as well, emotional craft. And I, I didn't know how to access that. I knew that I felt huge mountains of things. And sometimes in rehearsals, those mountains of things would spill out. But then in the next rehearsal, it wouldn't be there. And I would have no idea how to get it back or even if it was the right thing, or the right place to go. I didn't know how to work. And, and there's no other part that will teach you what you don't know than any of Chekhov's characters, really. And did the school teach you how to work? Yes. How at do least you work? It, at least it gave, me a, it gave me a place to sit. It gave me a grounding. Because Powis, I'm turning this into not how, but, but why. Because Powis um, didn't talk about that. Powis talked about things like, you get here on time. You put your nose to the grindstone. You don't sass back. You put every ounce of your energy into what Guy Hoffman is trying to teach you. And if you don't understand it, try again. You do everything Bernard Diamant is telling you about voice, and if you don't understand it, try again. You figure out how to make the link between Suzanne Rivet's movement classes and Bernard Diamant's voice classes. That's up to you to figure that out. And I remember the day I figured that out, 
and it was like a door opening. I realized that I could take something that had happened in one class and apply it to another. Nobody would know. I didn't mm -hmm. have to make up a completely new story for improvisation, although it looked, if you looked at the, at the schedule, it looked as though now you have improvisation, so this has to be, this came from my, you know, I was, I was a good student in school, I was an honors student in university, and so you, you study in a particular way, and I studied in that particular way, and I did this course that way, and that course that way, and, and at the National Theatre School, because Powis not only enabled you to swim around, he insisted that you swim around, and he gave you very, very firm guidelines. And then within those guidelines, you had to find your own way through the classes. It sounds to me like you are describing the moment that you stopped being an actress and you started being an artist. Because an artist no. is at that point where they understand or intuitively sense how everything feeds to the same end. And when they sit Very in good, voice, yeah. movement, fencing, whatever, you're still in the craft and the technical part. But what you've just described is crossing over to the next stage, which you knew as Nina that you needed mm. when you went for Nina. Mm. 